patients uh, usually come to the surgeons um, and see Dr. Simeone over here for a uh, possible resection and we end up getting our CT, uh, triphasic pancreatic protocol CT, um, which is really essential uh, for all these patients to define um, the extent of the disease. The um, University of Michigan, we have developed our pancreatic protocol CT. We, we use uh, 0 0.75 mm, 0 0.75 millimeter uh, sections and are better able to delineate um, the um, extent of the vascular um, uh, proximity um, or invasion um, to define whether this is a resectable disease or a borderline resectable disease or a locally advanced. This is essential because only truly the borderline resectable patients are candidates for uh, neoadjuvant therapy. Uh, the practice for neoadjuvant therapy uh, varies between institutions um, uh, and also varies in terms of what regimens um, uh, both chemotherapy and or radiation that are employed across different groups and across different institutions. So at University of Michigan, we uh, typically um, uh, use the uh, NCCN guidelines to define uh, the borderline resectable patients. However, we've tweaked it a little bit in, um, to allow more homogeneity of the patients um, that are candidates for uh, uh, neoadjuvant therapy. The rationale for the neoadjuvant therapy um, can be thought of in a few um, uh, different ways. A folks who've uh, got um, pancreatic cancer, as Andy mentioned, is mostly um, systemic disease. Even though if we know that it appears to be uh, localized to the cancer, in most of those patients there is cancer or circulating cancer cells that we can detect. And Andy, Andy's project is, uh, one of his projects involves uh, isolating circulating um, pancreatic cells um, uh, that he can more um, discuss later. The systemic disease um, is what determines um, the ultimate prognosis of the patient and hence giving therapy um, to chemotherapy to all those patients is necessary. And only 50% of patients who undergo resection end up getting chemotherapy. Therefore, it's very essential that folks who've got uh, borderline resectable patients get chemotherapy and maybe neoadjuvant therapy is, a, uh, uh, is the right answer for those folks. Second, folks, the uh, folks have, uh, patients have who have R1 resection that have microscopic margins positive after surgery have a very poor outcome. So it's essential that we do not take those patients for surgery before uh, we've exhausted our resources to, um, uh, to make them as clearly receptible as possible. And I don't know if anyone wants to else chime in. So, well, yeah, well, maybe I can chime in uh, because we actually see a lot of these patients together, uh, patients that maybe don't have overt resectable disease, but may have involvement of major vasculature in the area, which can involve the hepatic artery, the superior mesenteric vein, even superior mesenteric artery. And together, collectively, at our multidisciplinary tumor board, um, we all evaluate very detailed images and make a decision about which category the patient might be in, be it surgical resectable category or borderline category. Now, what our goal is when someone has borderline disease, it's actually to try to give them the best chance to have a resection with negative margins. And so we have to make decisions about what is going to be the best opportunity for that patient. And often it is treatment up front, 
with therapy that will help shrink the tumor, potentially, and to control any circulating cells that may be in the body. Sometimes that's with combination chemotherapy. Sometimes it's with new drugs that we're trying on the basis of clinical trials, because we know that while chemotherapy may be helpful, that there are probably going to be more, um, uh, uh, more effective <coughs> drugs that we need to find. And that's an active thing that we're working on here is actually to have clinical trials for patients in exactly that category to try to minimize any circulating cells and also more effectively shrink the primary tumor. So we do see a lot of patients who get treated with therapy up front with the ultimate goal of resecting their tumor with negative margins. And oftentimes patients will, will go through multiple different therapies on the way to potential resection. So we'll start off with one very <coughs> promising cocktail chemotherapy and they might have a little shrinkage but the surgery might still look difficult and then we either might move to a different chemotherapy or add in a little radiation as well. Again with the, really the end goal of getting a complete resection and getting yeah. the best outcome. So, so you mentioned the NCCN sort of standard, and, and just for me, because I don't, being a gastroenterologist, I don't really treat them with the drugs. What are the standard drugs for, what's the NCCN standard drugs for chemo? There are only a few clinical trials that have been done uh, in borderline resectable pancreatic adenocarcinoma, and the reason is because there is, this is only a very small subset of patients who present with pancreatic cancer. It's very hard to accrue patients on a clinical trial. We have currently at U of M a clinical trial that uh, allows us to give a three-drug combination called Fulferinox, followed by um, gemcitabine-based radiation. And we are trying to uh, find out whether this is uh, a protocol that can become standard um, in the future. The the other regimens that exist out there, apart from the Fulferinox combination, are gemcitabine and abraxane, or gemcitabine alone. And the determination is made on the basis of the uh, patient's age, performance status, and the uh, ability to withstand the toxicity from each of the different regimens uh, available. Um, as Dr. Feng mentioned, we have um, typically started off with a combination chemotherapy regimen and evaluate the patients with a pancreatic protocol CT every two months and discuss it at the multidisciplinary tumor board. At that tumor board, we all sit and make a decision whether or not the patient has had stable disease, progression, or even partial response in which case we decide whether further combination chemotherapy or radiation would be beneficial at that stage. And I'll let Dr. Feng tell us something about the role of radiation in neoadjuvant uh, folks. And I also wanted to touch a little bit upon the NCC and guidelines. These are um, guidelines that are available for many different types of cancer with um, emphasis on both the diagnosis and the treatment. For pancreatic cancer, they're very different than the guidelines for other cancers, and I'm part of the committee right now. For pancreatic cancer, almost every recommendation has a little asterisk that says clinical trial preferred because the outcomes are so dismal and we really need to do better for our patients. And so. Um, that just highlights the need for improving therapy, both systemic therapy, radiation therapy, and, and selection of patients. Just um, it's, it's really crucial to, to, um, to support clinical trials for pancreatic cancer. I think, that, I, just, I think that point in particular needs to be highlighted because data came out last year that showed that nationally only 6% of patients who have pancreatic cancer enter in a clinical trial, wow. which is really an abysmal yeah. number. And um, I also think it's important to highlight that for every type of patient that we see here, we have um, novel clinical trials to offer. And it's really important for us to make advances in this disease, for us to be exploring promising things that are um, being studied in the laboratory and see how they can help patients. So I, I appreciate bringing that point up. And just to expand on that last point, I think the neoadjuvant uh, pancreatic patients offer uh, a great opportunity for us to test novel drugs um, f 
for the first two or three months or even up to six months of therapy followed by surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, that way we can assess not only the effect of the drug on, on the response and survival of our patients, but also um, at the tissue molecular level by uh, finding out whether that drug is effective and should be pursued uh, further or not. Mm -hmm.